I'm Archie Luxury. Welcome to the show, fuckers. And today I'm doing paid fucking reviews. Paid reviews. And, uh, quick whist watch check. Jager La Coutre Reverso Grand Date. And uh, today I'm doing a, uh, a video on what happens to rich fuckers when they have too much money. Rich fuckers with too much money. So uh, let's roll the fucking credits and jump for it fucking in. <laughs> Okay, today I'm doing a, a story for my good friend Brian. This is not Brian from Zirkin. This is another Brian. Bryant, his name is, sorry. And uh, he, he, he wrote to me. And uh, I've done a few consulting vids. See, I also, as well as paid watch reviews, for 50 US dollars an hour, I do private consulting. I'll chat to you about any problem you want, whether it's <laughs> watches, women, <coughs> I'll chat to you about fucking anything. And uh, I've done a few consulting gigs with Bryant. And uh, he goes, hope you're doing very well. I'm back in the market for a big time luxury watch and need some no holds barred advice. Any chance you're available? I sent you 50 for a consultancy and I'm in desperate need of help. Attached is my current collection, looking to make a major shakeup by adding one and trading one. Most likely going to trade my stainless steel sub for a Pepsi to get a GMT. I don't need two subs. Then adding something big, around 30 to 35,000 US dollars. Needs to be sporty and only Rolex AP or PP. Considering Rolex, Rose Gold Yachtmeister, AP Royal Oak Offshore 44mm RG, AP Royal Oak Offshore Anthrotrite, PP 5711, 1R, PP 5980. To get all of these except for the Rose Gold Yacht Mast, I'd need to trade in my Daytona. Leaning right now with all Rolex, with trading my stainless steel for a stainless steel Pepsi 16. 16, 7, 10, and adding a rose gold Yachtmeister. PP5711 is killing me though, and the APs I love too. The 5980, Perpetual Calendar per Chronograph Patek. No, it's not. It's a, what's the 59? 5980 is a annual calendar Nautilus. It's a Chronograph Nautilus, fuckers, sorry. And it's one of the best styles I've seen. All gold Rolex GMT2 is also in the play, but wouldn't get Pepsi. If I do that, another vintage fuck. Touch cho tough choices. Looking forward to catching up. Remember, I'm not into dressy watches, only sports. And uh, I was having a talk to him. And when I finally got around to ringing him, he'd done a few interesting things. He had sold his white gold Submariner blue dial. Sold it. And uh, he got a bit of a clean up. It wasn't, he lost a little bit of money. He uh, he just bought a rose gold Nautilus. No, a rose gold Aquanaut on a rubber strap, tropical strap. And I, beautiful choice. And I think he'd sold his Daytona. And he was looking at <clears throat> getting a Richard Millet Bubba Watson. A Richard Millet Bubba Watson. Just the minute, hour, second version. It's in white. A Bubba Watson RM. And uh, I got to tell you, this is an $80,000. He's managed to locate one. He's got a guy who will sell it to him for $80,000 US dollars. Box, papers, service history. It's only a 2015 piece. A Bubba Watson, Richard Millay. And what do I think? What do I think? I think he's got far too much money. Far too much money, and my consultancy fee should be a hundred an hour for someone who's got so much moolah. But that aside, what do I think? Fuck me dead. This is what happens when you are super rich when you're making good money. Isn't that the sort of 
problems you'd like to have. Do I get <coughs> do I get a Bubba Watson or do I get a perpetual calendar chronograph Patek? Fuck! Fuck is the word to use. And um, I said to him, the Bubba, the Bubba Watson. Bubba Watson was a famous golfer. Famous American golfer. And Richard Millet, what do I think? Fuck! That's out of my price range! <clears throat> out of my fucking price range, indeed. But I said to him, you got the rose gold Aquanaut on a rubber strap. Bubba Watson, what a fuck off piece. He doesn't like formal type things. What's wrong with adding a Bubba Watson? A Bubba Watson. And uh, I, I kind of understand his decision. This is the dilemma. This is the dilemma of really rich fuckers. And uh, he's a cool guy. He's really nice to me. Uh, he's rung me a few times. He always pays the money, which I desperately need. He always pays the coin and he have a, we have a great chat. He's just a nice laid back guy. He's really, he's, he's nice. He's a cool guy. I really, really like him. So as far as it goes, what do I think? I think he's cool. He's really cool. These are the dilemmas of the really well-to-do collector. And it's interesting because he's not building a huge collection. He likes compact collection so he can wear the fucking things. And... I think that's that's quite a good trait in a um, gazillionaire. It's just a cool trait. My humble billionaire was the same way. He didn't. He had three Richard Millets at one stage, but he trimmed it back down to one because he wasn't using them. And I think that raises a very important point. Unless you're using the fuckers, what good are they? So I encourage all you fuckers out there, whisk watch check, whisk whisk watch check. Go and wear it. Go and get your good watch out of the box. Put the fucking thing on and enjoy it. Archie Luxury signing out, fuckers. Mmm. Mmm. Really nice. Bit of a rat hair.